All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna be talking about tomosynthesis. We're gonna be talking about 3D mammography. Do you think we should call it 3D mammography? You're gonna see our opinion coming up here at How Radiology Works, where we have bite-sized content for those in the radiology field. You're all very familiar with a standard radiograph, right? So this is a chest radiograph, and in a radiograph, what we're seeing is the differential contrast where the areas where there's not very much absorption are dark in the image. This is the lungs, not very much absorption. And then areas where there's more absorption in the soft tissue are brighter, and then even more absorption in the bones, brighter still. We also design contrast agents, which have high Z materials like iodine in order to preferentially stop those X-rays. There's some weaknesses of the projection geometry though. One weakness of the projections is that what we're seeing is the overlap of all of the anatomy on the way from the X-ray tube to the X-ray detector. So it's difficult to see soft tissue and really low contrast structures with projections because you're looking at an overlap of lots of different soft tissues. So if you have some subtle changes, it's gonna be difficult to see those subtle changes. So what could we do to try and improve this effect? Actually to reduce the contribution of other tissue to the image or make an image which is more like a single plane. So we're gonna show a pictorial example just to simplify matters. So imagine our object consists of just a red circle, a blue square, and a green diamond. And in the case of our X-ray projection, if we're looking at just a straight projection down here, what's gonna happen is they're all gonna lie on top of one another. So if you look at our image receptor, they're all lying on top of one another. So it's gonna be difficult to tell those things apart as far as which plane they're in, and they're gonna be kind of contaminating one another because they're all gonna be in that image at the same location. So. What we'd like to do is actually to blur out the things that are above and below a given plane. And we call that plane the focal plane because things in that plane are in focus. Didi Staplatz actually demonstrated this kind of tomography wherein you're actually moving the source or detector with respect to one another. And if you do that, now you can see from this angle out here, if you kind of just draw your straight geometric lines, because our x-rays are traveling in straight lines, right? When you draw your straight lines here, you can see now that the red circle is now not lying on the blue square anymore. And if you look at the green diamond, it's not lying on the blue square either. So from that one view, you can see now that we've separated things. So if we took our first one and we took this one, and then we could take even one more on the other side, then if you look on the other side, when I come over here, now they've actually switched places with one another, right? If I draw our lines here, you can see that now the red object moved over to the other side of the blue square. So what actually happened is that red object is actually tracing out a line or actually getting blurred in a line. So the red object will be blurred in a line and the blue object is in that focal plane. So it will stay and not get blurred out. And then the green diamond underneath will get blurred out as well. So this gives us an ability to actually make an improved image in that focal plane. But one problem is it's kind of difficult because you have to ahead of time determine those distances because you don't get to pick where that focal plane is. It's just the geometry of the system in the acquisition. And after the fact, after the X-ray is acquired, you can't change that. And these were often taken in film at the time. So this was before computers. You could essentially be adding them up by just taking partial exposure from the different views and adding them up in film. Up until the early 70s, this was actually still state of the art. Then in the early 70s, there was actually a couple different groups. There was Grant and Miller, and Grant actually proposed the term tomosynthesis. And this was actually done, again, in an analog manner, 
without using computers, you could take the different images, take films of those images, put those images on top of one another, but shift them a little bit and then put light through those images in order to make another image. Nowadays, this can all be done in computers and we're gonna see the idea of what we're talking about here is that if we'd like to make an image of a different plane, so instead of just that one focal plane, we'd like to make an image of a plane above or a plane below. So if you look at say our four acquisitions that we just call A, B, C, and D, and we can actually add these four acquisitions up in different ways. So if we just add them up without shifting them at all, what we get is the image where the thing inside of the focal plane is in focus, just like we talked about earlier. But if we actually shift them all with respect to one another, in this case, we could get the green diamond now to be all in focus. And that way we can make an image of plane three where the objects above it are blurred out. Again, in this case, in a line because our source and detector were moving along that linear direction. This is what's called tomosynthesis, where you're actually synthesizing these image planes, and that's why it's called tomosynthesis. So nowadays, everything has actually transitioned from the film to digital. That includes mammography. And in the case of mammography, you actually have a tube here, and then you have a detector that's underneath the breast, and the x-rays are irradiating the breast and they're being measured on our digital detector. So now that everything is digital, it's actually very easy to do those shift and add algorithms that we just talked about. There's sometimes a little bit fancier methods nowadays, but it mostly just comes down to actually shifting those images with respect to one another and adding them up. That means is for a breast mammography system, you actually just need to have some motion, for instance, a rocking motion of your x-rays with respect to the detector. And in that manner, you can actually generate those different planes. So the projection-based method, which is your standard mammogram, you can see that right here, and you can see that there's a significant amount of tissue which is overlapping in your standard projection image. And in the tomosynthesis image, now you can see that you're actually looking at less of the actual tissue volume because the stuff outside of that plane has actually been blurred out. This is why tomosynthesis can allow for improved visualization in comparison with a standard projection. You could also do this with an x-ray system. It could be any number of different acquisitions that you could think about if you're moving the tube and detector with respect to one another. Here's just one that's pictured where you're looking at a trajectory of your X-ray tube, and that's all pointed here at our stationary digital detector. Again, you have a similar scenario where in the case of projections, you have things that are overlapping. For instance, you do visualize the bony anatomy here in the ribs, and in the tomosynthesis, if you look at a plane that's right up the middle, you are seeing the heart well, and you're actually not seeing the ribs over here because they have been blurred out because they are out of that given plane. You also will note that you're gonna visualize the anatomy better inside of the lungs itself because you're blurring out the structures above and below those planes. Right around the same time that tomosynthesis was invented in that early 70s, that's the same time that Hounsfield was playing around at EMI and actually developed the first CT scanner. So there wasn't a big time where you had tomosynthesis without CT, but they actually came up together. So tomosynthesis is actually more of a niche application where it's surviving in certain areas where CT has not yet become dominant. In general now, throughout the medical field for all of your whole body scanning, the power of CT is now really greatly appreciated. And you can see the difference between these acquisitions where you're looking at an acquisition in 2D and then what we're calling 3D is actually CT because CT you have enough data for what we call complete reconstruction 
where you can make an image and it's mathematically accurate of the object itself. It doesn't contain blurred versions of the rest of the anatomy, actually kind of corrupting that image plane. So we're calling CT imaging 3D, projection imaging is 2D, and thus tomosynthesis is somewhere in the middle. We can debate where that should be in the middle, but let's call it for simplicity right now, just 2.5D, kind of halfway in the middle. How radiology works, we actually don't think that someone should call tomosynthesis 3D imaging. If someone calls you up and says, I'd like to sell you some 3D imaging, you should say, I hope you're talking about a CT scan if you're talking x-ray, because otherwise I don't believe you. <laughs> and if the salesperson is really persistent, shoot them on over to our video here and we'll set them straight. Tomosynthesis is in between 2D and 3D. And if this isn't enough to convince you, ask them to see a reformat plane. So if you look at a tomosynthesis acquisition and you look at the primary acquisition plane, they're gonna look like this, you know, like we showed, they're pretty good, have some improvements over just a 2D projection. But if you look at a reformat, there is gonna be serious overlap in the anatomy, such that it's gonna be difficult to appreciate the structures. Again, this obviously depends on the acquisition parameters, but they typically will not have the general quality of a CT scan. You might ask yourself if CT is a bread and butter of your radiology department, from neurology to cardiology, then why isn't it used for breast imaging? So CT actually isn't the greatest for just breast mammography type scanning because a standard CT, you're actually gonna end up going through bone and it's actually gonna end up with a lot more attenuation than just the regular image of the breast. So it does make sense to have a breast specific CT scanning actually. And this has actually been proposed in the literature and studied significantly at a number of institutions and now companies. So I'll just point out three here that show you that CT is actually coming in the breast pendant geometry, where in this case, the woman is lying here on the table, and then the breast is hanging pendant, and all of these acquisitions actually involve the CT geometry going around the breast, and we have two acquisitions which are using an X-ray tube and then a flat panel detector, and then one acquisition, which is using a helical acquisition. So it's a detector which does not cover the full breast, but does a helical acquisition of the breast itself. Some example images here are from the John Boone's lab. And then this is from Roland Ning's group. And then a company founded by Willie Callender. This company is called Koning, and this company is called ABCT. So a couple interesting things now, actually both of these companies on the bottom are actually now run by CEOs, which are the sons of the founders of these two companies. An interesting tidbit is that uh, John Boone here from the third company was actually a mail carrier early so in life. So you learn some interesting tidbits of information here. In the future, we do believe that CT will actually play a significant role in breast imaging. We do obviously note that the transition was much easier to go from mammography to tomosynthesis because the x-ray acquisition was basically the same and the system is basically the same. It's just you're doing a motion on those same systems. So it's going to be a bigger transition in order to go to CT for the breast on the fact that the soft tissue imaging is gonna be superior on CT we do believe that in the future, there will be scenarios where the breast CT will be of significant clinical benefit. You're talking about 2D, 2.5D, or the true 3D CT. We appreciate you stopping by here at How Rheology Works. I'm not just taking cheap shots here at Tomosynthesis. I actually spent my PhD working mostly on Tomosynthesis reconstruction. So I think there's a lot of interesting material here. And for reconstruction, if you want to get a starter for CT reconstruction, 
We have a video on filtered back projection. Check that one out, coming up next.